Hey there everyone, Atesh here, back again with another video and welcome to the TypeScript series. So in this series, we have already discussed a tiny bit about the functions in the last video. And as I promised, this is going to be the final video on the promises and you'll have enough of the knowledge of how to handle functions. Now the TypeScript revolves all around the types and you will be learning a lot about the types as we go further. It's not like just these are the primitive types, these are the types, that's all you go ahead and do with that. It's more about the philosophy of how you use the types, where it is necessary, where you can avoid them and all of that. That is what we are going through with this series. Remember, TypeScript is just a superset or a wrap around the JavaScript that allows you to write better JavaScript. So I hope you have watched the entire series or playlist. And in case you haven't yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and let's go ahead and get started with that. So taking you again onto my computer screen. So this is what we have done in the last video. Now, while discussing all of this, in the last uh, video, we noticed that we were returning, instead of a number just by adding to it, we were returning hello. And this was not giving me any problem at all. And this is a point of concern for me. Especially, try to always imagine, whenever you're learning TypeScript, always imagine that this is not just you who is writing the code. This is a team of 20 or maybe 30 developers who is writing the entirety of the code. You have defined some function, maybe somebody wants to add his own functionality of the function. And now if he's going to do such things like return hello, obviously this will break your entire application because there are probably thousand use cases of this simple method, which are dependent of returning a number to it. But since you change that and you're returning a string, that can crash your entire application. It is a little bit debug to handle the things in 20 or 30 or maybe 40 developers of a team. So that is why TypeScript is being used in the function. So obviously this is making a problem, but TypeScript is not giving me any error or at all. So that is why we have learned about that at the time of taking the input, we can annotate it with by whatever the type you want to accept. And similarly, you can just put a colon and can say that, hey, this is add to, this is supposed to return me a number. Now, as soon as I do this, this will allow me to not do such things, which is just a mischief activity that, hey, instead of returning a number, why are you returning a simple hello, which is a string? You shouldn't be doing that. So I can comment this out and I can remove this comment and can say that this is happier now, much more happier. This saves me a ton of time and my team's time to make right and write productive code and make better softwares. Okay. Moving on, let me talk and discuss a little bit more about the functions and then we'll I will redirect you onto the documentation to understand that yes, there can be more with the functions, uh, but this much of the knowledge is enough, good enough. Okay, moving on. So let's just say first and foremost, uh, let's talk about uh, some of the functions which are gonna be like this. And again, we'll talk about them a little bit later on. Right now, just want to give you a brief overview of this. So for example, let's just say there is a simple function which says get value. There is nothing wrong in it. And in this one, you simply say, hey, give me a my val, uh, just like this. And this could be anything, number, string, doesn't really matter. Let's take our example with the number itself. Now, you're doing some conditional check, maybe, uh, just with the if condition, uh, something like this. If my val is greater than five, then I would like to simply go ahead and say, hey, I would love to return something like true. Maybe there's a use case scenario for you in this one. Otherwise, if that's not the case, you're going to go ahead and say, hey, return uh, a status code. Maybe you're building a web application which says 200, okay. Now, in this case, obviously, our first theory is not really applicable because if we go ahead, right now, you can see if you get hover onto this one, this says, hey, uh, this is giving some hint that it can be either a true or can be a string, uh, but we are not implicitly mentioned, explicitly mentioning uh, that it can be a simple, let's just say, if I do head and string, then this gives me a problem. If I go ahead and say, hey, this is a Boolean, then this gives me a problem. So we haven't yet learned about the type where we can return more than one type. So just want to give you a brief overview that these kinds of scenarios will happen. These are part of functions, but we have to learn a little bit more about TypeScript in order to handle these situations. Not really complex, it's just a union type and we'll discuss on that in a separate video. So just giving you that, yes, this could happen. This is one of the case, okay. Moving on, uh, there are a couple of more things that you can do. For example, let me take another example so that you can take these code file as a note one. So let's just say there is simply a hello and uh, this is a simple method. Or let's just use a arrow function method because I think you would also love to know that if here we can put up a colon and number, what is the syntax of doing the same thing uh, in the arrow functions as well? So this is how our basic arrow function works. We have written that many times. So inside here, we take all the parameters, uh, like for example, you want to take a string as parameter, you can do that. Just after these parentheses, you can put up these colon and can say, hey, I'll return up a string as well. Now, as soon as I do this, this actually gives me a problem that, hey, functions whose declare type is neither void nor any must return a value. So this is giving me a problem that, hey, 
you're not returning me a value. So your code is actually wrong. So in this case, if I go ahead and return even an empty string, this is just working out. So this is the basics of how you do it in an arrow function. I hope you're getting this. I hope you're enjoying this. If yes, hit that subscribe and a like would be really awesome. Otherwise, let's continue. There is no problem at all. Okay, one more thing I would like to discuss about this is uh, some, some values, something like this. So let's just say we have some heroes and you know what heroes I'm about to use. You know me, I'm a big Marvel fan and a DC fan also. So let's just say we have a Thor, we are going to go with Spider-Man and we are also going to go with uh, Iron Man. So we have a list or an array in which there could be numbers, there could be string or something like that. Now, one of the great advantage of using the TypeScript is it knows really so much out of the box. For example, this is a common scenario. We do this in like thousand times in JavaScript. If there is an array, we go ahead and loop through it by using a map. If I go ahead and use a map, I'm actually looping through each of the hero and then I go ahead and use a callback and I can probably say simply, hey, I'm going to return a simple uh, string, something that's going to say uh, hero is, oops, hero is and then let's use a variable which is going to be something like this and let's just go ahead and have a hero. So this is a really simple code, uh, nothing magical out of the box, but if I hover over to this heroes and this map function even here, uh, you can notice that this is giving us so much of the definition and advantage. I don't have to call anything. It automatically predicts that hero is going to be a type of string because this array is of type of string. Uh, but if I go ahead and duplicate this and let's call this one as, let's comment out this one. And instead of having a Thor, uh, let's just go ahead and say that this is one, this is two, and this one is three. So TypeScript, all I wanted to show you is TypeScript is smart enough. If I hover over this, it automatically changes this hero to a number. So it is aware of, of the context that is coming up in here. Right now, if I go ahead and comment, uncomment this one, comment this one, it automatically switches its uh, thing into strings. So the hero is a string in this case. So I can avoid an additional step that, hey, whatever the values that are coming up from this one, I don't have to explicitly annotate that this needs to be always string. Uh, perfect syntax, I can go ahead and work on with that. But as you know, the, the context switching of the TypeScript is really smart and we can rely on this one. So there is no problem in that. So in this case, uh, yep, it's good. I'm happy with this one. But the one thing which you should be really careful is what is the return type of this method. So in the map, uh, it is expecting that, hey, uh, you're returning up this string here. But instead of this, uh, there might be a case where you want to return in every case too that is also allowed and that is also valid. That's why the map has such a detailed uh, information that is given to the TypeScript that, hey, what is the value you want to return? In this case, it could be two or it could be a previous value. In this case, especially, I would love to return that what is the type of the value that we are returning in this one. Uh, again, we could do it like this and then we can say, hey, the values that I'm returning is going to be simply a string. Uh, there we go. This is much more of a read readable and reliable code. So when I go ahead and say, hey, in every case, I'm going to go ahead and do one, it stops me from doing this. So good practice that we should all follow that, hey, don't do uh, such thing. Yes, you can avoid that input. It will automatically deduce what is coming up from the array. But this is a better syntax, especially for when you're writing the code in the team. So this is a better syntax. Okay. This is the basics. Uh, now coming up on to the final part of the function where we actually will move into the documentation. This will actually force us to move into the documentation. So let's just say there is a function we are defining and there are two types of function. The first one is uh, simply saying console error. So the idea behind this method is whatever is being passed to it, you just go ahead and uh, log it to console. So let's go ahead and log it to the console. Obviously, we have to take an error message. So let's go ahead and call this one as error message. That is a type of string that is being given to us. And we are just going ahead and saying, hey, just go ahead and print this error message into the console log. A very common scenario, which you do while building the web application in the initial phase. Now, if I hover this one, it says, hey, uh, the console error, the message it's taking is in the string format, but the colon after this is void. That means it's not returning anything. So yes, this could be the thing. But another, this is not a good practice, especially if you're using TypeScript. The good practice is to explicitly mention that, hey, whoever is using this function, he knows more about the definition of function, that this is returning a void. That means it's not going to return anything ever. So accidentally, it just says that, hey, if I go ahead and say 
uh, I'm going to return uh, one as error message. Now you don't, you shouldn't be doing that. And again, this might look like, hey, that's very easy. It's easy because you're just alone coding right now watching a YouTube video. But imagine when you'll be writing code with along 15 developers or maybe 50 developers alongside with you. Okay, the same thing could be replicated one more type. Uh, another method that you will be handling a lot or writing a lot is handle error. So this handle error, uh, obviously, this is handling the error. This is not going to be returning a void because it handles the error. So uh, let me go ahead and copy some line from the documentation directly because this is something which is coming up from documentation. I'm not making this up. So just like we have all these things in the documentation under the more functions, uh, this is written as never. Uh, some functions never returns a value. Neither it's void because void is means return nothing, but there is never as well, which never returns a value. That simply means uh, the function never returns a value. I know this is very close to the void, but this is specially made so that you can handle some kind of error because this is kind of an intentional crash that we are doing to the function for having this. So in these kinds of cases, I can just copy this line and I can go back onto the code and instead of the console logging the things, I can just go ahead and say throw new error and whatever the error message I am just passing on, I'm handling this gracefully. So if I go ahead and put this as a void, which is not a good thing. If you want to make your errors more robust and handling part of it, just use never, which is again recommended in the guidelines of the TypeScript. If I hover this again, it says the return type is never and error handle is declared, but its value is never read. Uh, that's fine, uh, but you get the idea. From where this is coming up, again, I'm not pulling this out from the thin air or out of a hat like a magic. This is mentioned in the documentation. The never type represent value which are never observed. In the return type, it means that the function throws an exception or terminates execution of the program. So forceful termination of the program. Never also appears when TypeScript determines there is nothing left in a union. Union, we'll talk about that later on. That's a subject later on. But you get the idea how to read the documentation and how to find out the actual source from where this is coming up. I hope you are enjoying this, the valuable series up here. And again, I'll wrap this all the source code from now onwards. I'll put them into the dashboard as a community session, which is a free segment here uh, at iNeuron. You can go ahead and download them. Uh, so you can have that. And again, the most important part is not just the source code that I'm giving you. The most important part is the mindset that I'm trying to give you with these videos so you can write better piece of softwares. That's it for this one. Let's catch up in the next video.